338 is the time. Adam Rittenberg of ESPN.com covers college football like a blanket. Joins us on Second 365 Radio and 365 Sports. Adam, so many different places and stories and topics to get to. We just had Ren Baker at University of North Texas. Of course, expansion changes continue, and it's not going to stop at all. What are your thoughts about what Bob Bowlesby at, at, in the Big 12 have been able to do, and they want more? After what, hey, guys, what, I got a really bad connection. Okay. You guys might be calling me right back. Yeah, we'll call you right back. So. Okay, Adam Rittenberg will join us from ESPN.com here uh, momentarily. Uh, I'm going to ask him about where the Big 12 is and what they've done and also the fact that they want more. And then we'll get into the American and others who, of course, have been doing what they've been doing as well. Uh, in the studio today, Hayden Bumpus, Armstrong Sims, and also Jack McKenzie, now rejoined by Adam Rittenberg. Better, Adam? Better. Better. Gotcha. All right. Uh, what are your thoughts about where the Big 12 is now with the four that they got and they want more and where they were in late July and what they've actually accomplished in about two months or so? Yeah, I think it's, you know, under the circumstances, it's about as well as they could have done. I think they added some schools that a lot of us considered, you know, either Power 5 already or borderline Power 5 schools, you know, schools that have had success uh, in football that have, you know, in some cases, really large fan bases and, and will, I think will help offset, you know, what are, you know, big, big losses. And, and Bob Bowlesby has said that from the start, you know, losing Oklahoma and Texas, you can't sugarcoat what that means for the Big 12, but the key is, you know, can you offset it with the BYUs and the Cincinnati's and the UCF uh, in Houston? Certainly, uh, I think it's it's possible to at least help the, that that process a little bit. I, we're going to find out more in the coming years as far as uh, how that affects the upcoming television deals and so forth. But uh, uh, I think you know, again, they they were put in a very difficult position, you know, in, in a very surprising way, at least to them. And I think they've responded about as well as they could have. Adam, how do you think that even the you know the well, all the conference realignment, whether it's the Big 12, the AAC, what's ever going to come down with the Conference USA, Sun Belt, whatever, affects the 12-team playoff and, and the expediency to get that done? Well, yeah, I, I think – I don't know if, like, the, the, the kind of residual realignment moves that are happening now have great impact on the playoff because it seems like, at least at the Power 5 level, that things have settled down unless, you know, to your first question – uh, the, the Big 12 makes a second uh, move here in expansion. But if you know what the Big 12 is, it seems like the three uh, leagues in the alliance, the Big 10, ACC, Pac-12, have decided to stay in their current uh, models, and then the SEC is at 16. So uh, unless there's something else that's coming, uh, I don't know if, if it will affect realignment, but I just the, the fact that it happened seemed to slow down the process. And there, there, there seemed to be a, a feeling like, hey, we, we, we can't go ahead and, and just push this through uh, especially given who has been pushing mostly for it, which is the SEC and everything that happened in terms of adding Texas and Oklahoma. So I think there's still some things to be worked out. I understand the frustration. Um, I, I, I've kind of gone back and forth on the 12 team playoff. I'm not as uh, gung ho about it as some people are, but I also see the value and I do think it's probably where this thing lands. But I, I also understand why, uh, you know, others are, are a little hesitant, especially given the way the contracts are. Uh, as well to, to maybe get out of this initial, you know, uh, agreement of, of what was it, uh, 12 years and then and then move forward with a completely new playoff and a completely new uh, media rights agreement for it going forward. Adam, what do you think of the uh, new American conference? You have uh, ECU and Memphis and Navy and USF, all those that are sticking around, although a couple have been rumored for, for Big 12 uh, membership maybe in the future. Uh, but now you add Rice, UTSA, North Texas, FAU, Charlotte. Uh, what do you think of those teams in the new American conference? Right. Well, I, I think it's it's very clear that they, they went with uh, you know schools in urban markets. And you know, in some ways, this is sort of the old school approach to expansion because you know, that when the Big Ten added Maryland and Rutgers, it wasn't because they're Maryland and Rutgers. It's because they're close to, enough to the New York and, and Washington, D.C. markets. And I think that's the hope here is that those schools, you know, in some cases, they're, they're very new schools with new programs. Can they continue to mature and develop and, and create a real following? There's certainly great momentum now at a school like UTSA, whereas a few years ago, North Texas was that school that we were all buzzing about. Now, North Texas is struggling. I, I'm really curious what this can do for a program like Rice, which has had you know one of the longer traditions uh, of the new members, at least in football, but has obviously struggled uh, here in recent years and, and hasn't made much of a dent as far as the Houston market. So curious to see if this move can can help Rice 
uh, and some of those other members as well. So your thoughts about where we are, is Georgia that much better than everybody else right now? Well, it certainly looks like it on defense. Now, I think they have to be challenged a little bit more you know, with, with better offenses, and they should be at least if they get to the big the SEC championship game against uh, an Alabama or someone like that. I mean, you know, they, they, I think they get Tennessee in a few weeks. Tennessee, if healthy, has shown that it can score points. And you know, Josh Heifel's done a nice job with, with Hendon Hooker and getting improvement out of that Tennessee offense. You know, maybe we'll get a better sense of where uh, Georgia is defensively. But they, they have been outstanding, and they've been you know, good enough on offense uh, to, to complement what, what looks to be one of the historically great defenses in recent years, I just want to see them play better offenses. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's been it's been Kentucky, you know, not a great offense. Clemson, clearly a bad offense. You know, Florida will be interesting in a couple of weeks if Florida can challenge the dogs. Otherwise, uh, they're going to just keep rolling through these these opponents. We're talking to Adam Rittenberg, college football writer for ESPN.com. Adam, do you think Cincinnati uh, has to keep at their current pace to get into the four? Um, you know, I, I think it certainly helps when you're in that position to be dominant in victory and to look like a complete team like they have the last few weeks. Uh, what, what happens outside of Cincinnati obviously isn't in their control. Um, and there, But I think there's been some positive things in recent weeks in their favor while they've continued to win. Alabama losing a positive. Iowa losing a huge positive. Oregon losing maybe the biggest positive of all because it pushes them closer to being out of the playoffs. Um, you know, I think Oklahoma, if they had lost, it really would have been perfect uh, for Cincinnati in, in their setup, even, even though we know either Oklahoma or Oklahoma State is going to lose a game. We may see Oklahoma State lose this week to Iowa State. So uh, Cincinnati, all they can do is continue to win dominantly. Their conference is not going to help them a ton, but SMU is ranked. Houston's playing really well. Uh, and then Notre Dame, if they, you know, they want to keep rooting for Notre Dame. They get USC this week a game that I'll be covering. They get North Carolina and a pretty winnable schedule the rest of the way. So Notre Dame, even if they're not that good of a team, which I don't believe they are, if they can finish 10-2, and 11-1, and one, that's going to help Cincinnati's resume. Adam, what is your belief level or how has your belief level risen uh, with Caleb Williams and the switch at quarterback for the Sooners? Uh, they obviously have, have looked like a different team these last couple of weeks, although you know, still some questions defensively and whatnot, but uh, that offense is back. It is. And, you know, I was as down on Oklahoma as any uh, one on Twitter or, or media wise, uh, at least that I could say. I, I, I was just ready for them to lose. I, I wanted to stop talking to them, talking about them as a playoff contender. But you're right. They have looked different on offense since they made that switch. They're making those big plays. They're scoring the ball with ease. But then, like you also mentioned, the defense hasn't looked as sharp as it did earlier this season. So, you know, are, are they still a, a playoff contender? Sure. Are they, are they one of the weaker playoff contenders? Absolutely. But that quarterback gives them a chance because, uh, you know, Lincoln Riley's still one of the uh, absolutely elite uh, quarterback coaches and play callers. And if they can just improve a little bit on defense, you know, they do have a chance to run the table. They still have some tough opponents left. They have, uh, they have Baylor. They have uh, Oklahoma State. They have Iowa State. So it's going to be a tough road to, to, run, to run the table. And then obviously the Big 12 championship. But uh, they have to feel better about their chances now. You, uh, you had a story, I believe it was you, that had the story out about college football coaches and where they are and who's done this and that. And Dave Aranda, of course, is getting a lot of attention, as he should, at 6-1. and one. Your thoughts about Aranda and 6-1 and one at Baylor? Yeah, he's just done a great job. And as you guys know better, better than anyone, you know, there, there was nothing normal about that season last year for, for Dave and for Baylor and, and how much COVID affected them seemingly from, from the summer all the way until – the end of the season and so you know i think i think you know, this has been a normal uh, year a normal year of evaluation and, and he's looked a lot better as the head coach i think he made a great move in, in bringing in jeff grimes from byu to coordinate the offense and, and and they're much more explosive they're much more consistent on that side of the ball so um yeah, i think baylor fans should be really excited and, and even regarding the, the you know dave's connection to lsu and, and even being a southern california guy i i don't sense that he's he's uh, he's on his way out i think he's going to be at baylor for, for the uh, at least the immediate future and and, and that's uh, that's good news because the guy you know he, he's really one of the smartest coaches and you guys know this whenever I talk to Dave you, I learn something about college football or just learn something about football in general and uh, I think he's uh, he's he's really doing a nice job with with, uh, with uh, as now the overseer of the program and and handling uh, handling a, a pretty pretty difficult schedule well so far. No doubt. Hey, Adam, uh, what do you think of that LSU job? I mean, obviously, Edo's going to coach out the rest of the year, but, uh, you know, this was always kind of there. Uh, even in, in, entering the season, we kind of felt like, hey, there's, 
you know, he's got to keep an eye on Baton Rouge, and and sure enough, here we are. So your thoughts on them actually pulling the trigger and, and Edo finishing out this season, and then obviously what will be, you know, along with USC and, and who knows who else, a pretty big coaching search. Yeah, we have two tier one jobs that are open right now. I mean, LSU was going to open. Uh, you know, when it did, certainly was a surprise. But you know, after the loss to Kentucky and, and just how non-competitive they were, uh, I think there was an expectation from people I talked to that it was just a matter of of, uh, of when, not not if. Um, even though they're only two years removed from that national championship, and so you know, Scott Woodward, as you guys know, has a very uh, clear reputation. He he hires big big names, and he goes after the, uh, the 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 top coaches. And so you know, Jimbo Fisher obviously has had a denial so far. So is uh, Dabo Sweeney as far as their interest in the job. But I, I don't think Scott Woodward's going to be standing up there introducing the next coach, and we're all going to have to Google that name. I think we're going to know exactly who it is. You know, whether it's a uh, uh, James Franklin or a Lane Kiffin or a Mark Stoops or or whoever, uh, I think it's uh, it's going to be a very recognizable coach who can handle that environment, hopefully, and and, and obviously all the recruiting and, and the pressure that goes along with it. But uh, that 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 you know, Scott Woodward doesn't hire anonymous coaches; he hires big names, and I think he certainly wants to do that now at LSU. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate your time. I, I know you've got something you got to get to. We appreciate your time when you were available. Adam Rittenberg, ESPN.com, college football writer, and a lot of notes, tons of notes on his timeline. Uh, on uh, on Adam Rittenberg at ESPN. One quick note, uh, a college football note, with Coastal Carolina getting knocked out by Appalachian State, and that's their first win against the top team, uh, top 25 team, I think it was, since Michigan, back when they had that blocked field goal to end the game in I front still, of 100 million people inside their stadium. I still remember exactly where I was with that App State Michigan game. I was at my aunt and uncle's house, woke up on a Saturday morning on the couch, and just turned on college football, and here was App State and Michigan, and I'm thinking, like, this isn't going to be a game, and sure enough, ended up, ended up going crazy by the end of it, rooting for App State to pull off the big victory, and sure enough, they did, and yeah, that, that still sticks with me. Kicked a field goal with no time left last night. Uh, also, now now nine, is it nine teams, uh, n- n- ten unbeaten. Wake Forest, Michigan and Michigan State, they play each other. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, they play each other. Georgia, Cincinnati and SMU, they play each other. UT San Antonio, we had Jeff Trailer yesterday, and then San Diego State just kind of continues to do what they're doing as well.